Welcome back, all you Baylors, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today's tour takes us to the gloriously polygonal streets of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. First up is obviously the first stage, Warehouse. Now I'll be honest here, I didn't grow up playing the original game on the PS1. I experienced these levels through their remakes in future Tony Hawk games. Because of that, this feels weird to me. Comparing Warehouse to its remake in Tony Hawk's Underground 2, the lighting is completely different, and there's this whole other area to explore. It's bizarre playing the original and experiencing it as it was. I can still see the greatness though. This is a strong first stage. Not just for the game, but for the whole franchise. You load in and your character immediately kicks forward. You crash through a pane of glass and roll down a hill. You're immediately plopped into a safe little sandbox to figure out the controls and learn the language of the game. There's no hazards to threaten you. You're completely safe as you work everything out. It has some awkward parts, like with this line ending with you face planting into a wall, but overall it's nice. I love all the little set pieces in this stage. This strip of quarter pipe that stretches all along one side of the map, the taxi covered with planks of wood, the two kickers, and this quarter pipe that you can only get to by jumping out of the quarter pipe below it. This doesn't really seem like a place people would really do tricks, because if you do a trick in the air and roll down the pipe, you'd have to worry about falling off the ledge. Then again, Warehouse isn't based on any real location, so the level designers didn't have to worry about pesky realism for this stage. Up here is a pretty cool spot, kinda hard to reach and stay in as opposed to jumping through it. There we go. What would the purpose of this be in World? Since there's a door here, I guess this could be a little observation room? For some boss to watch all the workers down below as they do their business. Wait a minute, why does a warehouse have all this skating paraphernalia? Rails and kickers, I can understand. Some bored teenagers can stumble across an empty warehouse and bring those in themselves. But quarter pipes? Maybe one, sure, but all these? And a full-on half-pipe that's built into the ground? I'll grant you that I haven't been inside of a lot of warehouses personally, but I'd be willing to bet they don't have this many quarter pipes all over the place. And where'd this taxi come from anyway? Did some skater bring this in after the warehouse was converted into a skate park? Or was it here before that? Was this a taxi factory? Could have been. Where else would a taxi come from? Next stage is school. I promise I won't do every stage in the game but I have to cover so many of the early ones. They're just so good. And school is no exception. Just the premise there is such a gripping hook. There's something special about taking a place you've seen so much in your life, something you most likely see as super boring, and making it fun. A plain old school is turned into a massive skate park. It's rebellious. What isn't there for a teenager in the 90s to love? First point of interest is the school gymnasium. Feels appropriately big in here. Basketball court in the center with bleachers flanking it on both sides. Well, they should be bleachers. Instead, they're smooth ramps where all the different rows of seats should be. Wouldn't be very fun to sit on this and watch a basketball game. Though I guess this is more fun to skate. Speaking of watching a basketball game, there's only one hoop. One on this side of the court, but nothing on the other. Maybe they play a special one-hooped version of basketball in Miami. The ceiling fans are an interesting addition, particularly the shadows they cast on the ground. I feel like the scale of the shadows isn't quite right. 
based on where the lights and fans themselves are, but that's just a nitpick. Cool detail. Behind the gym is a relatively dark back alley. Big chunk of space back here. This feels like it'd be a dangerous place to be around in an actual school. Who knows what kind of hooligans hang out in this spooky alleyway. Riding down the slope in front of the gym leads you into a whole other section of the map. A few things worth talking about around here. Got a sneaky little covert spot. None of the objectives bring you here, and it goes pretty far back. There's this random wall plastered with the album art of Suicidal Tendencies album, Free Dumb. Odd thing to have in a school, but okay. Maybe graffiti artists are just really good around these parts. Also, what's with these nondescript walls lining the play space? They're obviously not school buildings or anything like that. There's no entrances or windows. Plus, they're kind of curved to match the quarter pipes going around it. This looks less like a school building, and more like a wall to keep titans out. The last major thing to point out on this stage is down this way. The big screen next to the pool. Actual full motion video plays on it. That's a cool way to make use of the PlayStation 1 CD technology. Really meshes well with the high quality music. Wait. Do you think that this is the music video for the song currently playing? I noticed that if you skip to the next track, the video changes. Okay, I'm on the track Superman by Goldfinger. I really wish I could play it and the other songs for this video, but Content ID would not be happy with that. Just take my word that Superman is playing right now. Let's look at the video a bit more just to see what it's like. You might recognize this, but me as I'm writing, I don't. Now I'll search for the music video of Superman by Goldfinger on YouTube. I don't even know if this song has an official music video. Hmm, doesn't seem like it. Wait a minute, I recognize that checkered floor. So the music video from Here in Your Bedroom is playing. Looks like another video is mashed up with it though. Turns out, that's another Goldfinger song. Mabel. I'm not gonna look at every song in the game and their videos, but here's a few in the accompanying song. See if you can identify some of these music videos. It's so cool that they made individual video files for every song. And where there wasn't an official music video, like with Superman, they created their own out of Goldfinger's other videos. Some of the songs just have random skateboarding footage, and that's cool too. Mall is up next. You start in this bizarre... I almost want to call it a stairwell, but there's no stairs. Kind of like the bleachers in school though, skating down stairs isn't particularly fun, so I get it. Ooh, there's a bunch of fake shops. I'll only cover the mildly interesting ones. Dumpster Burger. The name doesn't inspire much hope, but I feel like the burger would be godlike low-key. Scarbutt Coffee. Inside is a black void. Do Starbucks normally look like that? I've never been in one, maybe that's accurate to real life. It really opens up after that with a spacious room and a beautiful fountain. It's kind of funny there's no railing, so kids or whatever could just walk right in and get wet. But again, this is a skateboarding game, it'd be annoying to bump into that. A cafe, right next to the coffee shop. This mall could do with some diversification. Oh, that's awesome. I always remember seeing cars inside malls, with signs proclaiming that you could win this if you just fill out a card and put it in a little box. I'm assuming somebody won cars from those and that they weren't complete scams. Let me know if you or someone you know won a car from a mall sweepstakes. I'm super curious. Huh, that's a peculiar little crevice. The green lighting is different from the fluorescent lighting of basically everywhere else. Why did they want this spot to stand out? Whatever, moving on. 
Down an actual set of stairs, you come across another beautiful body of water that, yet again, doesn't have a railing stopping you from walking right in. Some more shops. Boards be us. Pizza face. Hey, that's not nice. Skidmark cards. Classy. This is a store you can actually enter. Not very gracefully, mind you, but doors are for chumps. It's basically just an alternate path to continue heading downhill. But you can turn around. I wonder how many people have done this, turned around and truly looked back here. The layout is so weird with this shelf of what I can only assume to be cards. It's sitting right in the middle of the store, as opposed to hugging the wall like the other shelves. And there's no register either, they're just free for the taking. I won't take any though, I'm a good person. But Buster, okay that's just inappropriate. And finally, books. I think they gave up at the end here. Whatever, they came up with all the others, I'll give them a pass on books. As we reach the end of the stage, we arrive in a beautiful courtyard. There are ramps on both sides, so you can spend the rest of your session time doing tricks in here. And really, why are these ramps even here? I mean, okay, I feel like I should go in-depth on this concept because it keeps coming up. I repeatedly pointed out that certain areas or props wouldn't exist in the stages if they weren't designed for a game like this. Like why would all these quarter pipes be here in anything other than a skating game? They're steep, lead to nothing, and literally serve no purpose to a human walking around on two feet. Why is there a balcony here with no railing to prevent shoppers from falling down? Why is this ramp here other than to guide you to a floating video game collectible? Despite the game labeling this as a mall, it's not like the malls we're used to seeing. It's a mall through the eyes and mind of a skater. Thinking about my local mall, it wouldn't really be fun to skate in. But I can imagine adding quarter pipes, rails, pools, kickers, a whole bunch of stuff to make it fun to skate in. And not just fun to skate in, but fun to play as a level in a skateboarding video game. Like, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone to nail this gap in real life, but you can do it as much as you'd want in a video game. I say this a lot in these videos, and I'm gonna keep saying it because I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression. The level designers weren't lazy for making an unrealistic mall. They prioritized fun over realism, and it worked pretty well. I just think it's silly to see what unintended consequences that design philosophy brought up. There's not much stage left after the courtyard, but there is a fun easter egg. A bunch of boxes stacked up with the word Apocalypse on them. This is a reference to an older game from the developer Neversoft called, yeah, Apocalypse. Down the final ramp and you're presented with the exit. Going through here will end the level. But I don't want it to end. I want to skate around that parking garage. Just the fact that I'm not allowed in there makes it all the more alluring. Who knows what beautiful rails are just waiting to be grinded in there. Streets is a stage. You start in this little cubby of the map at the top of a hill. You probably won't come back up after going down once the session starts, as it's kind of awkward to ride uphill. Which is funny, because one of the objectives for this stage is to trash five cop cars. So you start the stage, go down the slope, and start searching. But you can only find four. It's a big stage, and with the short render distance, I bet it's kind of hard to remember where you've checked when playing this for the first time. Just where is that dang car? Turns out it's right there, to the left of where you start, just off screen. That's such a funny and evil trick as a level designer. Props to them for that. While I was riding around here, I noticed you can jump and ride on this little ledge. It's hard to hit, but you can defy gravity here, if only for a moment. Guess they messed up the flags on this particular piece of geometry, because you're definitely not supposed to be able to do that. 
Oh man, where do we go from here now? This isn't a linear stage like Maul. It's basically just a big circle. Guess we'll work away from this side. Here's a building with no entrance. Not really a surprise for a game from the 90s. What's the point of this? Not from a real-world perspective, but from a game design perspective. Specifically, the perspective of a game where you're supposed to do tricks in sections of the map and combo your way into other sections. Where does this part fit in? There's no way to seamlessly flow into or out of this awkward U-shape. If the ledge was curved, you could grind in from one side, do a loop, and go right back out the way you came. But as it is, you grind in and smack the wall. That's just me being Captain Hindsight, though. I've played a handful of Tony Hawk games in my life, but they were making the first one here. It's fine. There's this, I don't know, city building? It has two little fountains on either side of this ramp. Using the ramp, you can burst through the glass above and enter the building. Kinda barren in here. All there is are some pillars and a pool to skate in. Not even a door for non-skateboarders to use. Maybe people aren't normally supposed to come in here? Kinda cozy and secluded if you ask me. There is another building you can enter. It's a bit more difficult though. Another cute little pocket of the world. Whoa, those doors are massive! Is this a world for giants? Look at how tall they are next to Tony. And he's six foot two! I mean, are these doors? They're like 18 feet tall. But what else could they be? I better leave before I run into a giant troll or something. Over here is a tiny little version of San Francisco's Chinatown. This is obviously based on the real life Dragon Gate. It even has the little lion statues and the blue sign beneath the main gate. I wasn't kidding when I said tiny little version of Chinatown. This is all you get. But I like that it's here, a small section of the map dedicated to a visually iconic part of the city. I wonder what these signs say. I feel like older games didn't really pay much attention to what foreign languages and textures said, mostly because teams, budgets, and the overall project scope was smaller. But I'm going to take a guess and assume that these are mostly appropriate. Drop a comment translating some of the stuff if you can. Maybe they're secretly super wacky and zany. One more spot on this stage, and it's a bit of a doozy to reach. You ride along the center fountain and jump off at the end. I'm not used to the floatier controls of the older games in the series, so it'll take me a minute. Ugh. <laughs> oh god damn it! There we go. You cruise across these little overhangs, jumping from building to building. Eventually, you approach the final one. You ride a pathway that climbs up it, and you reach the top of the building, the highest point in the stage. The short render distance really sells how high up you are. It almost feels like you're in the clouds. It's hard to ignore this ramp reaching up even higher. During the career mode, jumping off leads you to a secret tape. But isn't that kinda insane? They want you to just jump off this building on a skateboard for a challenge. And it's not like you're landing onto a huge ramp to ease your fall. You're literally smashing through a glass roof onto flat ground. Well, I guess Tony could land that. I couldn't. final location of the video. Let me set the stage for you. You've spent the whole game skating places you'd probably skate in real life. Your school, a mall, the streets of your hometown, places you have context for. Streets is the final main stage of the game, but you press right on your control pad and see that there's another. Unknown. Location unknown and you need to complete eight more goals to reach it. Usually you have to beat three or five goals to reach the next one, but this is challenging you. Challenging you to go back and beat goals and stages you couldn't before. After all, this is the final stage. It should push you a bit to unlock it. 
So you do. And you unlock Roswell, New Mexico. You go from the everyday streets to a hidden government base that also happens to be a banger skate park. I love just how out of left field that is. Tony Hawk games definitely got weird later down the line with bizarre playable characters and levels, but it's easy to forget that the first game had a little bit of that weirdness too. Something that's kind of funny about the stage is that it's one of the game's competitions, meaning you have to compete with other skaters to get a high score. So that means a bunch of dudes in their 20s and 30s broke into a classified government site and are just hanging out watching each other shred? Isn't that the coolest? It's a relatively small stage, but I like the layout. A lot of half pipes to get some massive air on. And I always liked this line here, grinding and tricking off these rails. Whoa. Oh no. Oh god, he talks. Help. He needs my help. Uh. I'd break him out if I could, but all I know how to do is skate. Sorry, little buddy. There's another enterable room nearby. It has some military tech behind some laser fields, as well as, uh, our little buddy's ride. It's making some iconic alien warbly sounds. If alien saucers come to Earth and don't sound like this, that'd be a major bummer. Oh, there's a little laser burn sound that plays when you bump into them. That's cute. Not much else to point out about this stage, but it really is one of my favorites. Great theming, great layout, an amazing final stage for the first game in a legendary series. Check out either of these videos. They'll both satisfy you. Trust me, I wouldn't lie. I don't know how to. Like, subscribe, you, you get it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.